Namaste and welcome to Yoga Essentials. I am Scarlett and I'm very happy that you've joined me today for this Saturday morning class. So the asana spotlight this week was Navasana. We'll be doing Navasana in the class today. It's a 30 minute session. We're going to start with Tadasana, which we all know now is the blueprint for all of asana. So anything that's happening in Tadasana will be happening within other asanas to the extent that it can do. So it's really important that we understand all the actions that happen in Tadasana so we can translate them into all other postures. After Tadasana, we do a couple of sun salutations and then we do a few postures before Navasana and if we've got time, we'll do an inversion and a twist at the end and then Shavasana. So I would like you to pause this video right now and do your own warm up or you can follow the link in the follow the link in the description and that will take you to a 10 minute warm up that I did when I was in Thailand last year. Good. So I'll see you on the mat in about 10 minutes. Okay, so welcome back. And we're going to look first at Tadasana. So we have half an hour together and what I really want you to do when you're moving through this class today is really feel the instructions in your body. I want you to understand more about how you need to move your body as you're moving through the postures so you become more empowered in your practice and more safe and effective in whatever you're doing. Great, let's get ready and set up the Tadasana dynamic. We're coming into the classical alignment for Tadasana with the inner edges of the feet together. If you've got any lower back issues, there's stress or tension in the lower back, you can simply separate the heels slightly. This creates an internal rotation, releasing the butt muscles and broadening across the sacrum area so the lower back is happy. Otherwise, the inner edges of the feet together. And you want to lengthen and broaden through the feet. So you're broadening across the toe bases and spreading the toes and lengthening down the inside and outside edge of the feet, releasing the toes down to the floor. Engage your thigh muscles so that the kneecaps lift and center. This is an extension, a lengthening through the legs engages the thigh muscles. Draw the lower abdomen in and lengthen the tailbone down. So there's no duck bum here. We want to bring the pelvis into a neutral position so the lower back is happy. And at the same time, create this slight engaging of the pelvic floor, Mulamanda, bringing you stability. Now also, the torso, we want to lengthen through the front and back. So we're lifting the sternum away from the pubic bone, creating a long and hollow abdomen and we're lengthening the back of the head away from the sacrum, lengthening through the side body into the armpits. The chest is going to become more broad and open as we release the shoulders down away from the ears and lengthen into the fingertips. Hastabandha, spread your fingers, broaden across the palms and one thing to make sure that you're conscious of is that you're not doing something funky with your wrists. So the lengthening is from the shoulders into the fingertips, which will allow the wrist to be nice and open. So make sure you don't crick your hand in a funny position, which creates an angle on the wrist, which is either closing or opening in one, too much in one direction. Good, and then the head is effortlessly balanced at the top of the spine with the chin slightly tucked down and in. We have Ujjayi in the practice. I put a link in the description if you don't know how to do Ujjayi. Please, again, pause the video and just pop over and get that understanding of how to apply Ujjayi in your practice. And we start into Nasana for the first sun salutation. Let's take it very slowly. With Ujjayi, we're following the breath. As you inhale, reaching the arms up, bring the palms together above the head. Lengthening through to the fingertips. This is a two-way stretch holding this position here. So we're stretching up into the fingertips as we're stretching down into the feet and your whole body is in a two-way stretch. As you exhale, begin to hinge forward, floating down on the breath, still lengthening through the arms, releasing the head down, bending the knees if you need to. As you inhale, I want you to roll back up. Sweeping the arms up, bring the palms together above the head and as you exhale, release the hands down to the side. 
So I just want to mention one thing, that when you're coming down from this position and you're exhaling, folding forward, there's a lengthening happening in the front of the body which you maintain. Sit bones are starting to press back and up and you're staying long in the front of the body. Keeping the sternum lifting away from the pubic bone so that you're not collapsing as you're going down, you're maintaining an open, lengthening dynamic in the front of the chest. So let's take our arms up above the head and going down one more time, exhaling, floating down on the breath, lengthening into your fingertips, keep long in the front body, sit bones are lifting and separating as you release your head down, bend the knees if you need to. Halfway lift as you inhale, Shoulders are away from the ears. Stay, keep breathing here. Allow your breath to continuously flow. Make sure you have Hastabandha. Spread your fingers, spread your palms. Lengthen from the shoulders into the fingertips. Keep the length in the front of the body. Sit bones are pressing back. As you exhale, plant the hands down. Step your feet back. Drop the knees to the floor. Shift your pelvis forward so your Shoulders, the hips and the knees are in one line and from here you can bend the elbows and very gently lower the body to the ground. Point your toes behind and lengthen through your legs. As you lengthen through the legs you're going to feel thigh muscles are becoming active. Spread your toes. Good. Plant your hands flat on the floor, has to banda, shoulders away from the ears and as you inhale Peel the upper body away from the floor. Elbows are reaching down towards the ground and gazing up between the third eye. Now here, notice what's happening in your butt muscles. If your butt muscles are tightening, this is going to be locking the lower back into one position and then you're trying to back bend into that. Not good. So this is where we employ internal rotation to make sure the butt muscles are relaxing lengthening through to the toes, from the hips to the toes, and with the butt muscles relaxed, we can safely peel the upper body away from the floor and get a nice, even back bend in the spine. As you exhale, release down. Inhale, hands and knees. Exhale, push up and back into downward facing dog. And finding that position that works for you at the moment, maybe bend the knees, press the sit bones up into the air, Plant your hands flat on the floor, spread your fingers, palms aboard, and you're lengthening through the arms. Release the head down. You're looking through the body to the navel, your drifty is the navel, and finding comfort in the spine. So separate your shoulders, you're externally rotating through the upper arms to release and open the shoulders. And so the neck is long, the head is heavy. Good. Looking forward, and you're going to step forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, folding into active legs. Bend the knees if you need to. And as you inhale, roll up through the spine. Sweep the arms out and up. Palms together above the head. And as you exhale, release the hands down towards the side body. Again, coming into Tadasana. Engage in the thigh muscles. Spread the toes. Lengthen, broaden through the feet. Lengthen the tailbone down. Draw the lower abdomen in. Lengthening through the front body. Remember this lengthening through the front body as we're moving through the practice. Shoulders away from the ears. Lengthen down into the fingertips. Hastabandha. Head is centered. So again, Sri Namaskara A. As you inhale, stretching out through to the fingertips. The sweeping action as you bring the hands above the head, palms together, gaze towards the thumbs. While you're here, breathing with Ujjayi, and you're gazing towards the thumbs, just be conscious that you're not flipping your head completely back. Keep the back of the neck long, and with length in the back of the neck, just lift your gaze towards your thumbs. On your next exhalation, floating down on the breath, keep long in the front body, Releasing the head towards the floor. And as you inhale, halfway lift. Has the banda. Lengthening through to the fingertips. Lengthen through the front body. Exhaling hands down on the floor. Taking the feet back. Press the heels towards the floor. Press the heels away from the head as you shift your shoulders forward so your shoulders are above the wrist. From here, with the body in one line, the shoulders, hips and heels in one line, 
Engage the thigh muscles. You're lengthening from the hips into the heels. Press your hands down and forward. Press the toe bases down and backwards. So you're really grounding down and working into your foundation. With your body in one line, the next action is to simply on the exhale, bend the elbows, lower the body down. Keep pressing back through the heels, and as you inhale, coming all the way up into upper facing dog. Exhale, rolling back over the toes, into downward facing dog, holding downward facing dog. Again, you can soften the knees, lift the sit bones, releasing the spine. And from here, working the legs towards an extended position but being conscious that there's no rounding in the lower back. If you find your back starts to round, simply bend the knees, lift the sit bones up and allow the lower back to soften. Relax your face as you stay attuned to ujjayi breathing and upper arms are rolling outwards so the shoulders are separating, the neck is releasing, the head is heavy. As you exhale, soften the knees, look forward, inhale, stepping towards the top of the mat, halfway lift, exhale, folding into active legs, then as you inhale, coming all the way up, palms come together above the head, gazing towards the thumb, back of the neck is long, and as you exhale, release the hands down. Keep lengthening through to the fingertips as you're taking your hands down to the side body. Shoulders away from the ears, faces relax. Lengthening from the shoulders into the fingertips, broaden across the palm, spread your fingers. Keep the legs active and engaged, and toe bases broad, toes are spreading. Lower abdomen continuously draws inward, so below the navel, we keep the lower abdomen, the pubic area, drawn in. And then from this action, we are lengthening sternum away from the pubic bone to create this long hollowing in the front of the body. Good. Just be conscious as well that when we are supporting this opening and lifting the chest that we're not thrusting the chest forward. This means that we're closing the back of the body. So we always need to have this lengthening of the back of the head away from the sternum, the tailbone reaching down so we're keeping long in the back of the body as we are equally long in the front of the body. Let's go to Srinam Scala B. So feet together, knees together, making sure that you keep your knees together as we go into the chair pose. As you inhale, bend the knees, lift the arms up, and lift the gaze between the hands, or maybe your palms are together and you're looking towards the thumbs. Shoulders away from here is, let's stay here for a couple of breaths. Make sure the knees are pressing in towards each other. Draw the lower abdomen in and make sure the tailbone is reaching down slightly and you're finding that sweet spot where the pelvis is in neutral. As you exhale, fold into active legs. And as you inhale, halfway lift. Exhaling, stepping the feet back. And bend the elbows, body comes down in one line. Slide the toes backwards, so you're on top of the feet and then inhale, lift and lengthen through the upper body. Shoulders away from the ears, you're gazing between the eyebrows. And then as you exhale, rolling over on the toes, back into downward facing dog. So we're gonna step the right foot forward and plant the back foot flat on the floor. Now this is the point where you really need to be conscious of what's happening in your hips. Make sure the left hip is rolling forward here by internally rotating through the back leg. So rotate internally, so the inner thigh is moving up towards the ceiling, and this will keep the left hip pulling forward. You want to make sure the right knee is directly above the heel, both feet are flat on the floor. Now when you position your hip in the right position, the back foot will be turned in deeply. So this could be 45 degree angle, could be a 60 degree angle, could be a 75 degree angle. It all depends on what's happening in your hips. So be conscious to make sure the hips are forward facing and then plant the back foot heel down on the floor. Press down in the feet and as you inhale, rise up strong. I like to take my hands to the hips here and just check again on my alignment. Left hip is rolling forward because I'm internally rotating through the back leg. Bend the front knee, sink down, 
and draw the lower abdomen in. Tailbone reaches down, lengthen through the front and back of the body, shoulders away from the ears, lengthen through the arms into the fingertips. Always the same instructions. As you exhale, release the hands down, take your right foot back, bend the elbows, slide the toes backwards, and as you inhale, coming up, and as you exhale, you can always transition through the knees to come back into downward facing dog. Left foot steps forward, and then conscious that the right hip is pushing towards the top edge of the mat, so you're squaring your hips, left knee is above the heel, and I want to be internally rotating through this back leg to keep this right hip forward. This action is continuous throughout the posture. As you inhale, coming all the way up, woohoo! Bring the palms together above the head, internal rotation through the back leg, right hip is coming forward, back foot heel is pressing into the floor. Press your feet down, forward in the front foot, backwards in the back foot. Palms are together above the head, hips are square to the front of the mat, making sure the left knee is still above the heel. And as you exhale, release down, take your left foot back, bend the elbows, inhale, forward and up, lift the heart, exhale, lift the hips. Holding here for a few moments. Ujjayi breathing. See if you can lift your sit bones up a little bit more, releasing into the lower back, Active arms, active legs. And as you exhale, soften the knees. As you inhale, stepping both feet forward. Halfway lift, exhale, folding into active legs. And as you inhale, coming all the way up, palms together above the head. Exhale, your hands to the hips. Good. So, we're gonna jump forward now and go to Utita Chikanasana and Pavlita Chikanasana. So bring your hands to the heart centre, and as you inhale, turn the step wide to your right into Chukanasana. Turn your right foot out 90 degrees and the left foot in slightly, making sure that the left hip, left shoulder is drawing backwards, so your torso is facing the long edge of the mat. Your arms are wide and you're turning to face towards your right middle finger. So as you inhale, extend and lengthen over to your right side, keep the legs fully active, and as you exhale, release the hand down onto your right ankle, shin, or onto the foot. When you're coming down, you keep your arms in one line. So you're making a windmill action. Let that arm stay in one single line. Inhale, lengthen over to the right side. Exhale, come down. We're not going to hold it here for too long. You're gazing towards your left thumb, making sure the neck is happy. So you've, you make sure the chin is tucking slightly down and in, and then you turn the chin up towards your left hand. The palm is facing towards the long edge of the mat. And as you inhale, coming all the way up, <laughs> turn the heels, I had my hand in the wrong way then. Turn the heels, so your left foot is facing 90 degrees and the right foot is turning in slightly. The heel of the front foot is in line with the back foot heel or ankle. Arms are parallel to the floor and again you want to draw your right hip back so the hips are sideward facing, torso is sideward facing and as you inhale the arms in one line parallel to the floor, extend the lengthen over to the left side, exhale release down, keeping the arms in one line as you're coming down. When your left hand lands on your left leg your right arm is already up in the air, palm is facing out to the side, looking towards your right hand thumb. Make sure the back of the neck is long and happy and you've just rotated through the neck, taking the chin up towards the armpit. If there's any stress or tension in the neck, just release down, look towards the big toe. Keep the lower abdomen drawn in. As you exhale, press the feet into the floor, engage the thigh muscles. Inhale, popping up nice and strong. Now, exhaling, bring the hands to the hips. And as you inhale, turning to face towards your right foot, take your left hip fully forward as you're internally rotating through the left leg to bring the left hip around and the hips square to the back edge of the mat. 
So from here, we're going to do something different. We're going to enter Pavrita Trigonasana in a different way to which you normally do. So you're going to keep your arms wide, parallel to the floor, and the arms are going to stay in this position. So you're going to keep this one line from the fingertips to the fingertips. I don't want to see the arms change in position. <laughs> they should stay in one single line. And from here, with the hips forward facing, just simply twist over so you're facing around to the right side. And notice what's happening in the hips. The hips don't move. They've stayed in the same position. So this is practically what's going to happen when you're going down into Pavarita Chikanasana. You are keeping the hips forward facing and as you hinge down, the hips come into the position that they need to stay in and then just moving from the navel to the crown of the head, you're rotating through the upper body with the hips remaining stationary. So this is what's going to help you to get that right alignment. Very often students find it very difficult to find the correct alignment in Pavrita Trikonasana because of this twisting action that happens. The twist doesn't go into the hips. Keep the hips in one position. So let's take it again. We're in Trikonasana. Turn the right foot out at 90 degrees. The left foot in deeply. Bring this left hip around so you're facing the back edge of the mat. Widen the arms, arms parallel to the floor. Inhale, lengthen up through the front body and as you exhale, hinge forward. Coming down halfway. Making sure the hips are in the right position, square to the short edge of the mat. And then on the exhalation, twisting through the upper body from the navel to the crown of the head. The right arm is lifting up, the hips remain stationary and you're gazing towards the right thumb. As you exhale, release the hand down. Inhale, big circle, coming back up. Exhale, hands on the hips. So turning to face the left foot this time, widen the arms. Remember, we're gonna pivot forward, taking the body down, and then it's from the navel to the crown of the head, we're finding that rotation. The arms staying in one line. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, hinging forward. Coming all the way down. The back leg is on an internal rotation, keeping your right hip forward. Come into the position with the hips. The body is halfway down, parallel to the floor. And when you're ready, you're going to exhale, sweeping the right hand down to the foot, side of the mat, or onto the ankle. And at the same time, the left hand is coming up. The upper body is twisting. Good. <laughs> I'm saying good to myself. So the hips, remember, are staying in that stationary position where they're just pivoting forward. No twisting in the hips. As you exhale, release the left hand down. Inhale, coming all the way up. And as you exhale, return to Tadasana. Hands beside the body. So we're going to go through sun salutations to the floor now. Inhale, take the arms up. Bring the palms together above the head. And as you exhale, release down, folding forward at the hips. Use the next inhalation, long arms, long spine, look forward, shoulders away from the ears. And as you exhale, stepping back on your mat, bend the elbows, body in one line. Slide the toes, coming forward onto the fronts of the feet, lifting up through the upper body, shoulders away from the ears. And on the next exhalation, pushing up and back into downward facing dog. Good, as you exhale, soften the knees as you inhale. Jump forward and bring the legs straight in front of you. So I always like to do in my practice Paschimottanasana and at least one twist. So we're going to do Paschimottanasana, we're going to do Marichasana C and then we're going to do Navasana and that will be the end of the class. Looks like we're running out of time very quickly. <laughs> okay, so Paschimottanasana. Let's go through Tadasana dynamic. Lengthen and broaden through the feet. Spread your toes, inner edges of the feet are together and in this case, because the feet aren't flat on the floor, we can really find more length in the front of the ankles. So I very often hear people saying, pull the toes towards the head. This is going to create tension, you can do it for yourself, pull the toes towards the head. This is creating tension in my ankles and I'm feeling tension in the lower leg too. Now we want to lengthen through the ankles until the front of the ankle joint is opening and there's an equal opening front and back of the ankle joint. The front of the ankle should be smooth, no tension, no crinkly skin 
on the front, front of the ankle. So inner edges of the feet together, Padabanda, spread the toes, broaden across the toe bases, lengthen through the feet. Lengthen from the hips into the heels. As you do this, you're gonna feel the thigh muscles engaging. Keep the thigh muscles active, ground the sit bones onto the floor, and start lengthening through the upper body. Lift the sternum away from the pubic bone, shoulders away from the ears as we reach the arms up into the sky. Exhale, draw the lower abdomen in, engage the pelvic floor muscles, Mulabanda. Inhale, lengthen up through the arms into the fingertips. And as you exhale, hinge forward, leading with your heart and keeping length in the front of the body. Releasing the hands down onto the shin, the ankle, or onto the toes. Hold onto the big toes and hold onto the side of the feet. Find what works for you. And think about maintaining this length in the front body. So as you enter into Paschimottanasana, every inhalation, draw the sternum forward away from the pubic bone. Lengthen. Shoulders away from the ears. Tuck the chin slightly down. You're gazing towards your big toes and thigh muscles continuously active. There's a lot going on, but it's the same instructions that were given in Tadasana. So you're holding here for a few moments, relaxing the face completely, ujjayi breathing, observing that expansion of the body with every inhalation, every exhalation, inviting release, softening. So when we're in a posture and we look quite still, when you're looking at the posture, from the outside, somebody might not think there's very much movement, but with every breath we're feeling how the body expands and lengthens on the inhale, and on the exhale it's releasing and lengthening on the exhalation. So there's always this expansion going on, even on the exhale there's still movement to create more space and more freedom in the body. So as you inhale, coming all the way up, and as you exhale releasing the hands down to the side. So we're moving into Marichasana C now, bending the right knee and placing the right foot flat on the floor. So this is one of those postures where foundation is really important. It's going to help to create more rebounding energy and lift in the posture so you can create more length in the spine. So when you plant your right foot in this case onto the floor, it becomes part of your foundation. The left leg is extending and this means the thigh muscle is active knee caps are centered and you're pressing down into the heel which is as much as it can be a part of your foundation allow some weight to spread through the leg into the heel pada banda spread your toes broaden across the toe bases and lengthen through the feet so the sit bones are grounding into the floor part of your foundation you're going to lift your right hand up into the air rotate through the shoulder take the hand down to the floor and plant it flat on the ground as part of your foundation. So now for our foundation, we have the left foot heel, with the sit bones, we have the right foot, and we have the right hand, all pressing down into the floor. As you're pressing down through your right hand, and if, you're, if your arms are short, I encourage you to get either um, a block or a book, so you can actually have your hand in Hasabanda flat on the floor as part of your foundation. Important to use your hand as your foundation. This is gonna be a prop to create length in the spine. Shoulders away from the ears, spine is lengthening upwards, and we're keeping our spine vertical when we're moving through the twist. So avoid rounding into the spine and then twisting. This is really a big no-no for the spine. We always wanna find length and extension before the twist. So find that vertical position where the spine is lengthening, pressing into the foundation, wrapping your elbow around the knee, or you can take the elbow to the outside. In this case, I'm just gonna wrap around, a very simple twist. Has to band it in your left hand, spread your fingers, broaden the palms, lengthen through the spine, and as you inhale, lengthen, exhale, twist. The chin is moving on a parallel line, horizontal line. So every inhalation, lengthen, every exhale, twist, Every inhalation, more length. Exhale, pressing into the foundation, twisting. The eyes are moving around to the right, in this case, as much as possible. And you'll notice that when you apply this dristi, the eyes looking as far to the right as possible, it really helps with this movement into the twist. So make sure your eyes 
are the final point of this posture. The movement is through the eyes, you're rotating around to the right. And then releasing, let's switch to the other side. So right leg is active, the left foot is flat on the floor. There is a little distance between the left foot and the inner thigh. And right foot heel, grounding into the floor, engaging the thigh muscles, sit bones are evenly set into the ground, left foot flat on the floor. Inhale, reach your left hand up, and as you exhale, rotate through the shoulder, releasing the left hand to the floor behind you. Place the hand flat on the floor and use your hand pressing into the ground to create length and lift in the spine. The heel of the hand is in line with the sacrum. And as you inhale, reach up with your right arm, bring the arm forward, bend the elbow, and use your breath as you're moving into the posture. So every inhalation, lengthen, exhale, twist. More inhale to lengthen, lower abdomen in, exhale, twist. Lengthen the front and back of the torso, exhaling, twisting. And the eyes are leading around to the left. Good. One more breath here. Don't forget about your right foot. Padabanda, the right leg is active, left foot is pressing into the floor, and then releasing. <laughs> okay, so we're not doing half vinyasas in between, we're just going straight on to Navasana. So if you were doing a half vinyasa, oh, let's do a half vinyasa. So we're gonna cross our legs, and we're gonna place our hands on the floor, and we're gonna jump back into, or step into um, plank position, Exhale, Chaturanga, inhale, upward facing, exhale, downward facing. So from here, you've got a few options. You can take one foot forward to the opposite wrist and then the other foot, sit down on your butt and then just straighten your legs. Option two is you jump forward to cross legs and then you straighten. And option three, there's option three and four actually. You can jump forward across legs or you can jump, in this case, with straight legs and go straight into Navasana. So let's work our way into Navasana. So I think the first thing to do is to find a basic alignment without the legs fully extended. So we're gonna bend our knees and the toes are gonna be lightly touching onto the floor. Shoulders away from the ears and start to lean back until you find that point of balance between the back of the sit bones and the tailbone. So you should feel that you've got a nice triangular foundation that you can really nestle into. You don't want to be too far back so you're sitting on, on your tailbone and the sacrum is dropping down to the floor. Lift out of the sacrum, come forward to the back edge of the sit bones and just find that triangular platform to balancing. Lean slightly back, take the shoulders away from the ears and lengthen through the front body. No collapsing in the front body, it's always the same. Lift the sternum away from the pubic bone so you've got like this nice long hollowing abdomen area. And then straighten the arms, lengthen from the shoulders into the fingers, hastabanda, spread the fingers, palms are broad and open. If this is comfortable for you, simply take the feet up, padabanda, spread the toes, open the soles of the feet, and get the lower legs parallel to the floor. If it's too much, just take hold of your left wrist behind the legs and support like this. Make sure that you don't start rocking forward onto the sit bones, and make sure you don't start rocking backwards onto the tailbone. Your balance in between those two, the three points. From here, with the arm straight, or actually with holding the wrist, very easy to straighten the legs, keeping the shoulders away from the ears, front and back of the body long, chin tucked slightly down and in, gazing towards your toes. And if you're comfortable here, and you feel you've got the strength, really start to engage through your thigh muscles, internally rotating through the legs, keeping the legs and the feet together, and then you can release the hands away from the back of the legs, keeping the arms active, legs internally rotating. That's gonna really help to keep the legs and the feet together and to keep the legs 
Strong and active. Whew. It's a tough one. Make your shoulders away from the ears. Let's hold for a few more seconds. Padabanda, legs active. Internal rotation through the legs. Lengthening, lifting through the heart. Shoulders away from the ears, arms active. Ah, bend the legs as you release Navasana. And then let's jump backwards. Go through a half vinyasa. As we start to wind down, to finish this session. Coming into downward facing dog. Take a few breaths here. Allowing your breath to return to a natural rhythm. Ujjayi. As you exhale, soften the knees and jump forward, cross the ankles. Straighten the legs. So we've actually gone beyond the half an hour mark now already. So I'm going to invite you to lie down in Shavasana or you can just switch the video off and go into a shoulder stand and then a twist and then Shavasana. If you'd like to join me in Shavasana, then just simply release down onto the floor, separate your feet, palms facing up towards the sky, nestle your shoulder blades down towards the heels, so the shoulders are opening and releasing down into the ground, and the head centered. Start to completely let go. Hmm. Observing the natural rhythm of your breathing as you let go of Ujjayi and just surrender the weight of your body into the ground. So it's good to go through a mental process of relaxing each and every body part, starting from the feet. Imagine a wave of relaxation entering at the level of feet. And as you exhale, this wave of relaxation just invites softness and release. Every inhalation, this wave of relaxation starts to move up through the legs, through the shins, the knees, the thighs, into the hips. And with every exhalation, those body parts become heavy and completely relaxed. Imagine this wave of relaxation as it travels into the torso, into the groin area, into the buttocks, into the lower back, into the abdomen, Every exhalation, completely surrendering, letting go. And with every inhalation, this wave of relaxation traveling up through the upper torso, into the chest, the lungs, the heart, into the shoulders. Every exhale, just feeling soft and heavy. Feel this wave of relaxation traveling down the arms, into the fingers and palms. And every exhale, inviting release and surrender. And this wave of relaxation moving through the neck area, into the face, into the head. And with every exhalation, everything softening and releasing. And with every breath you go deeper and deeper into a sense of surrender and letting go completely. Feeling yourself supported by Mother Earth. Completely plugging in. The tuning to the Earth energy as it nourishes you. Staying with your gentle, organic and rhythmic breathing. Relaxing the face. Noticing the moment when body outline just completely dissolves away and you experience yourself as energy, pure energy.
And that will do, becoming more aware of your physical body, the contact that your body has with the floor beneath, beneath it. Just taking a few deep, satisfying breaths. And when you feel ready, hugging your knees in towards your chest. And just rolling over onto your right side, taking a moment here to climatize. And then whenever you feel ready, coming back up to a seated position. Closing your eyes, crossing the ankles in front of you, or just placing one foot in front of the other. Finding that position of comfort, whatever that is for you today. Sitting in an upright position with the spine vertical, shoulders relaxing down away from the ears, and head centered. You can place your hands, just clasp in the front of the body, or place the palms on the knees. Whatever feels most comfortable, find that position where you can experience a few moments of stillness and silence at the end of your practice. Notice how you're feeling on a physical level. Being aware of any sensation of energies, any arising emotions or feelings or thoughts. Without judging, just observing, witnessing that which is happening inside of you. And that will do, bring your hands to the level of the heart center. We'll end this session with a unifying arm. So let's all take a deep breath straight into arm. Inhale. Namaste, have a beautiful weekend and do leave your comments or questions or requests. Blessings and namaste.